So what we're going to be doing today is uh, finding the volume of an egg. And the way we're going to go about doing that is to draw the shape of the egg on a piece of paper, as you see here. And um, then what we're going to do is draw the uh, x and y axes through it. What we're going to do is find a point on this ellipse shape of the egg called the minor vertical axis. And what that is going to be is the point where the ellipse stops getting bigger. So you're going to do that by just finding the widest point of the egg here. And that's where you're going to draw your, um, your y-axis. And then obviously the x-axis just runs from the uh, tip of the egg to the, the butt of the egg. Now, when we're labeling our points here on the x and y axes of our egg, what we want to do is first off, label our origin, which is obviously where the two axes cross. And then the radius of this uh, half circle here is going to be called b. So that means that our point where it, uh, the points where this egg intersects the y axis are going to be 0, negative b and 0, b. And then um, where it intersects the x-axis on the right side, that's going to be b0, because that radius is constant all around the circle here. And then the uh, length of the half ellipse is going to be called a. So when we uh, draw that point here on our, on our graph, that point here where the tip of the egg intersects the x-axis is going to be called negative a0. When we're doing this uh, calculation of volume, like I said, we're going to be doing uh, volume by rotation, which means that we will only need half of the shape of the egg because uh, the rest of it's going to be calculated when we rotate this shape uh, all the way around the axis here. So what we've done here is just redrawn this uh, egg shape using only half of the egg. Now comes the actual integration of this egg shape. So how we're going to do this is just a, a, a simple integral uh, to find the volume by rotation. And obviously we set that up as the integral from 0 to b, which if you remember is the origin to the, um, to the right-hand side of our eggs, the butt of the egg on the x-axis. And we're gonna, we're, uh, since we're doing the circle portion here, uh, the, the function for a circle is going to be b squared minus x squared. So obviously... Uh, the volume by rotation calls for the pi here, and then times b squared minus x squared, and obviously dx, since this is um, an integral. And then what we can do is just take the pi out, because that's a, that's a constant, and we just integrate this. Now, one thing you'll want to keep in mind is that since b is a number in this, in this problem, uh, b is the radius of that circle portion of the egg, it's not a variable. So when you're integrating, it's not going to become b cubed over 3. Uh, it's just going to be b squared times x. And then obviously the uh, x squared becomes x cubed over 3. And we keep our parameters the same. And then you just go ahead and solve it from there. And we get 2 pi over 3 times b cubed as the volume for the, circ the half circle portion of this egg. And now we're just going to do the same uh, volume by rotation for the ellipse portion of the egg here. So it's just the integral from negative a, which is the left-hand boundary uh, on the x-axis, to 0. And um, then the uh, equation for an ellipse is going to be b squared over a squared times a squared minus x squared. And then obviously since it's volume by rotation, again, we're going to have the pi in there. And uh, then we just have our integral. And again, you're going to want to keep in mind that b and a are both real values. They're not variables. So what we can do, um, it's kind of interesting here, is we can take out the b squared over a squared entirely since that represents one constant. That's just a number. And we're left with the integral from negative a to zero of a squared minus x squared. And what we'll come out with is we'll have two pi over three times a cubed uh, times b squared over a squared. And just a, a, a word of warning here is that all these negatives can get a little bit tricky. So just pay extra attention to those negative signs when you're doing this integral. So all we have to do now 
is add together our two portions of the egg that we just calculated. Um, so we have 2 pi over 3 b cubed for the sphere portion, and then we have 2 pi over 3 times a cubed times b squared over a squared, and again, that's our ellipse portion. And so we, when we add those together, uh, we can factor out a 2 pi over 3 times b squared, and that just leaves us with a b plus a cubed over a squared on the inside here, and the b plus a cubed over a squared, obviously the, the a's can reduce, so we're left with just b plus a, and so we get 2 pi over 3 times b squared times b plus a. So the final step is uh, pretty simple. All we have to do is get the actual measurements on our egg. So uh, what we did here, just for the example, is we took a hypothetical egg, and uh, what we said was that the height of the egg, so the distance from uh, 0 b to 0 negative b on your, uh, on your drawing that we did in the, in the first part of this, um, so that, that obviously represents 2b. Uh, that's going to be 2 inches, just for our example here. And then the length of our egg, so from the tip to the butt, like in your drawing, it's negative a comma 0 to uh, b comma 0. So a plus b, that's just going to be 3 inches. Uh, again, just for the purposes of this example. So uh, since we know 2b is 2 inches, obviously b is 1 inch, and we can use that to solve for a. So when a plus b is equal to 3 inches, again, it's just hypothetical, uh, we know a is 2 inches. So all you're going to do here is just substitute in those values to the equation we just found for the volume of an egg. Um, so again, it's just written here. And th then we put our values in, keeping in mind that uh, b is 1 inch, a is 2 inches. And what we ended up with in our hypothetical example here is uh, the total volume of a, an egg it's got a length of 3 inches and a height of 2 at its widest and longest points is going to be 2 pi inches cubed. So in order for us to um, find out what the all, all the parameters of the egg, what we decided to do was put some putty on some paper and then take a flashlight and hold it directly over the egg. And in doing so, it'll cast a shadow on the paper, and we can trace the shadow to figure out what the dimension of the egg, the egg is. You know, like so. You can see that it fits entirely on the page. And uh, th that's the way we're getting our measurements. And then we put the x and y axes through. Victorious. Yeah.